Hello, everyone. Welcome to Inconvenient Truths. I'm your host, Jennifer Zheng. On February 10th, the first day of the Chinese New Year, the deadliest single incident since the founding of the People's Republic of China occurred in Shandong, where two police officers and a doctor were among the casualties. The incident shocked the Chinese internet. However, the authorities quickly blocked the news, making it difficult to confirm the details of the major case. While the various ver versions circulated among the people, an organization called the Revolutionary Freedom Army claimed responsibility for the incident. Is this an organized resistance against the CCP, or is it just mutual harm among the grassroots after the complete loss of judicial justice in China? Today, let's discuss this huge incident. According to news circulating on social media, the major killing took place in Zhaike village, Luohe Township, Ju County in Shandong province, with the death toll reaching as high as 21 people, including a doctor who arrived at the scene and more than 20 others injured. It's said to be a gang crime with at least three perpetrators, one almost one already caught and two others at large. Concerning the murders, to sum up, there are five different theories and present. The first theory is that the murderer was a dismissed special police officer who first stabbed two people with a knife at the entrance of the government family compound and then hid himself. When there were more onlookers and the ambulance arrived, he opened a fire on the crowd, resulting in more than 40 people being shot and 21 killed. This post also says that shortly after the crime, all local signals had been blocked. SWAT began to surround the city, and the city was under military control. Here is a report from NetEast, one of China's largest web portals, which reports on the murder of a family of seven in Ju County. This report from Phonics News, which is our official website, also says there was a murder in Ju County, Shandong province. However, both reports were quickly removed. This report this post said that it was the police who did it and that 41 people were shot at the scene. The second version of the story claims the murderer was a local villager in his 30s. Some said he was an ex-prisoner and that those in the same cell as him were also involved. He killed two families because he had been bullied by them during his school days. The third theory is that the murderer was in his 30s, slightly disabled, and was adopted by his uncle at a young age. The victims are two families, including the murderer's teacher from school, and there are children among the victims. The homemade gun used by the murderer was modified from renovation tools. The fourth version of the story claims that the murderer previously requested low-income insurance benefits from the village CCP secretary, but the secretary did not approve his request and even called the police on for <coughs> and even called the police on him for trespassing, which led to the murderer being detained. After he was released, he took revenge on the village where the secretary lived. The fifth vision is that an account on X under the name Revolutionary Freedom Army declared that that the organization was responsible for the incident.
The account also issued a statement saying that the purpose and the significance of the G County Revolution was to physically eliminate CCP officials, break the myth of the CCP's strength, forge a revolutionary consensus, force the two sides of the Taiwan Strait to confront each other completely and form a united front for the elimination of the CCP and the risk restoration of the Republic of China. The statement goes on to say that the revolutionary information in Ju County was timely and uh, accurate. The plan was meticulous and detailed. The pre-mobilization was strong. The action was swift and effective, and the retreat was orderly. In order to prove that the incident was the work of their organization, the, the account also retweeted a post from six days before the incident on February 4th. The first sentence on, of the report was, wait for the official announcement of the Freedom Army. Then, using coded language, it mentioned that people born in the 1980s might take action in China around the time of the Chinese New Year. This case did happen on the first day of the Chinese New Year. I checked and found that this account was only opened in October last year. There, were, there are only 669 posts so far, with 215 followers. Its purpose is to eliminate the Chinese Communist Party, overthrow the Marxist Leninist colonial rule, and resolve the country. And its avatar is a picture of the one to fifth president of the Republic of China, ROC, Chiang Kai-shi, who fought against the Communist Party throughout his entire life and who later retreated to Taiwan. This organization said that it was mission was its mission was to create a common cause for restoration of the country and openly recruited members of the special forces, commanders, and special agents to accomplish the cause of eliminating the communists and resorting the Republic of China. The above are the five different accounts of the incident. There is also news that the incident happened in the later part of the night, and the villagers called an ambulance first when they realized it, leading to the medical staff arriving at the scene before the police, which resulted in their being attacked and killed. And the nurse was also seriously injured and is being rescued in ICU. Government men and police are currently in the village, which has been closed to traffic. Another source said that the medical staff arrived in 10 minutes, but the police only arrived 30 minutes later. After the case, all websites in China blocked the news. Even the name of the location where the crime took place has become a sensitive word and no news can be searched. This short video of only three seconds circulating on the internet is said to be taken in front of Luohe Tanghou in Ju County, where you can see swapped cars parked in front of the compound, as well as multiple police cars. This is a photo of Luohe Tanghou, and using it to compare with the short video just now, it was found that the video was indeed taken in front of the Luohe Tanghou. Judging from the number of police cars, there were indeed more than usual, indicating that there was indeed an unusual event happening at this place. These two widely circulated videos are said to be some no, not this one. So these two widely circulated videos are said by some to be videos of the special police going to arrest someone after the incident. 
but others say that this is another place. A video, and this is also a video from So that this video is also from February 10th when police is in Jinzhai, Anhui province, tried to arrest a murderer who had fled to the area from Sunan province. The Chinese edition of the Epoch Times exclusively interviewed a local villager who confirmed the authenticity of the incident while recounting some details. According to the villager, her best friend's family of seven were all killed, and her home was only two kilometers away from the scene of the incident. The day after the incident, she went to visit the place where the murder took place, but there were about 10 policemen guarding the gate of the village, and the village was surrounded by a garden, so she was not allowed to go near the place. She said the murderer chose to the arrival of the Chinese New Year to strike at the same time as the whole village was letting off firecracks, and the villagers would not have thought that a among the sound of firecracks, there was also the sound of gunshots. The villagers said, quote, five families of 11 people were killed that night, and the five fam all five families were lost, and no one no knew who was the first family to be killed. On the morning of the Chinese New Year, he came back and killed another 10 people, a total of 20 one people were killed, and the three people are still in rescue. The guns used by the killers were shotguns or homemade guns." Unquote. The villager also revealed an important piece of information, that is, two policemen were also killed. She said that the villagers found people dead in the house only in the morning when they went out to pay New Year's visit. The police didn't come until noon, and she re reckoned that the police might want to suppress the matter, not realizing that it had already spread outside. The doctor was already dead when the police came. What she couldn't understand was, was that her friend's home has surveillance cameras, so finding the murderer should not be difficult. Why, after three days, the murderer has not been found yet? In short, considering various sources of information, it can be confirmed that a major homicide has occurred. However, the details of the case, the identity of the perpetrator, and the motive was not very clear. Based on the five different explanations regarding the perpetrator mentioned earlier, there are three possibilities for this incident. One, is a politically motivated action by a group claiming to be the Revolutionary Freedom Army. Another possibility is public resistance against officials, and the third is a civil dispute or retaliatory incident. If such a major incident had happened in a country with free press, then almost all major media outlets would have been ruling with the story, especially when there are still murders on the loose and the death toll is still rising. However, in China, not only are the media not reporting such a big event, but even the so-called gossip that the people are passing on to each other has to be blocked. You might be wondering why if it's just a case of civilians killing each other and not an incidence of civilians killing officials, the CCP would still want to cover up the news. Overall, the CCP does not like any form of bad news and that and what can and cannot appear in the media is carefully designed and arranged to ensure that what people see in the media fits the narrative given by the CCP.
A murder case of this magnitude, if one were to dig into it carefully, could lead to countless dirty inside stories that cannot be exposed. So the first thing the CCP thinks of is to cover it up. It doesn't matter how many more bad and ugly things happened, it is okay as long as nobody knows. If it is a political action of the self-proclaimed revolutionary freedom army, then of course it has to be blocked even more tightly. The other thing is that judicial justice in China has long been lost on an overall and institutional level. And once the people start enforcing the law on their own in large numbers and stop relying on the official system, then the CCP will lose its control over the society. Some people often say that China's problems are unsolvable and will inevitably end in chaos. On the first day of the Chinese New Year, the biggest murder case since the founding of the CCP's regime took place, which is indeed not a good sign. So which of the five possibilities is mostly likely to you? Leave us a comment and let us know. Well, that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Please help me spread the most important message by sharing my channel or videos or go to my website at jenniferzongblog.com to sign up for a membership or make a donation to support my effort. Thank you. See you next time.